Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to look at Irish Fiddle Bowing Technique. This lesson is going to be looking at the basics of Irish fiddle bowing. Uh, a lot of it is relevant to other styles as well, um, but I'm going to look uh, first at some general uh, techniques for holding the bow, etc. And secondly, some specific exercises for bowing Irish tunes, jigs and reels. So let's start off with uh, how to hold the bow. So for my bow hold, the thumb is going in the little notch just here and the four fingers are all touching the top of the bow and they're pointing at a slight angle backwards this is what i think is a fairly standard bow hold uh, there are v various um, different ways of approaching this but this is the way i do it some trad players you will see uh, bowing up here and um, I, I, to be honest, I don't think there's a good reason for this. I think that most of the players who do that, and this does include some of the very best players, I think they do that because they were never taught otherwise, and they managed, shall we say. But I think the standard bow hold is a better thing to, um, it's, it's a better approach, particularly for a beginner, before you really know what you're doing. So try and hold your bow like that. Try and keep your hand as relaxed as possible, so you shouldn't be gripping it, there shouldn't be any tension in your hand. You're going to try and get the maximum movement from the wrist rather than from the arm. So if you're playing like like that with a wrist uh, kind of locked and your upper arm doing all the work, then that's really not the, not the approach. You try and get as much movement as you can from the wrist. And if it's possible, then you keep your elbow pretty well in the same place and as much as possible keep your upper arm in the same place the first finger does a lot more work than you might think because a lot of people will approach this as you grip the bow and you drag the bow backwards and forwards with your arm and that's definitely not the way you want to do it the little finger should be applying subtle pressure the whole time uh, either more or less pressure and as you push your little finger down to get that action there then you will see a slight tensing of the tendons in your hand, in your right hand, and that's what you want to get used to. So when you want to articulate notes, it's done by a little bit of pressure on that little finger, and it's something a lot of people will ignore, but it's very important in the long run. The two biggest mistakes that a beginner violinist or fiddler will make is that, which means too much pressure and not enough movement, or that, which is a whistle, which is too much uh, movement and not enough pressure. So try and make both of those noises. Try and make that noise by pushing down too hard and moving slowly. And try and get that whistling noise by taking your first finger almost off the bow. Then you get the whistle and when you're able to make both of those noises clearly then you should have enough understanding to be able to make neither of them so that's about the speed of the bow and the pressure of the little finger generally your bow lengths are going to be a lot shorter than you expect them to be i think when you start off playing classical you try to play nice long even bows and uh, those are fine for certain types of playing but they're not fine for Irish music particularly for jigs and reels so just as a general rule you're going to have to be controlling your bow length looking at your bow and seeing how long those bows are and get them down to like um, a couple of inches for a long bow and uh, half an inch for a short bow but we'll come back to that some more. So now I'm going to give you two sets of exercises. One set of exercises for jigs and one for reels. 
So um, let's start off with, uh, um, people have laughed a, a lot when I've uh, described this before, but when uh, a classical player tries to play a jig, they do this. <laughs> which uh, uh, you have to laugh at it, especially if you are one of those players. Um, what's wrong there is that it's long, even bows, and that's not what we want. So let's just have an open D, and uh, we're gonna do a long, short, short, long, short, short. And on each of the longs, we're just gonna add a little bit of pressure with this finger, and you should be able to see the tendon just kind of jumping a little bit as you do that. You'll find that the best part of the bow to do this is between the middle and let's say three quarters of the way. So around this sort of area. Um, try doing this really slowly at first. And you will find that it's very hard to make yourself make those bows really short. Try doing it even slower. And just gradually speed that up. And it might take you a couple of weeks even to get that from... From there to... there but you can you can really hear the difference um, you're adding so much more subtlety and so much more drive when you're doing da 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 as opposed to da 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 which is kind of the machine gun approach we started off with so if you look at the the little exercise I've written we've got an, uh, an accent over the first of each three and that accent is going from a down to an up to a down to an up and you think of a jig bowing as not down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, like that. You just think of it as down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, let's just add a few fingerings to that. So we're going to do... And again, we're going to try and put an accent on... Da, 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 da. Now, we're going to try and put an extra accent on the first of each six, so... And that accent again is coming from an extra bit of speed on the bow, but most importantly, an extra bit of pressure from this finger. Now, so far we've started everything on a down bow. Let's just try that starting on an up bow. For me, I think it's really important to be able to do almost any pattern starting either on a down or on an up. Because um, when you start a bow, when you start a bar or a phrase, you never quite know how you're going to end up at the end of that phrase. And being able to start the next um, bar without having to worry about getting from a down to a down or an up to an up. Uh, it's really useful if you can automatically switch from starting on a down to starting on an up. So um, every, every exercise that you learn, try doing it with an up as well as a down. Let's just do that again. So the dig on the up is that kind of movement. Okay, let's do some string crossing. So we're doing a down, up, down, up. So this is a, an extra bit of difficulty in that the bow is having to go up and down. Just try that here. You can feel how awkward that is and that's also quite awkward. But just above the middle is the place that this really works quite easily. Now, uh, let's try adding an accent, um, particularly on the fourth beat. 
or the, the second beat rather, the fourth note. So. Okay, now let's have a little bit of the tempani bit. So. So what we're doing here is we're slurring the last note of each bar into the first note of the next bar. So if we're starting on a down bow, we've now got an up, and a down, and an up. If you want to do this, these four bars as a loop, then you want to slur the penultimate two notes. So we're going... And that brings us to a down again. So the whole uh, four bars repeated will be. Like that. So the effect of what we've just done is to add an extra accent to the beginning of the bar. It kind of gives it a whoosh. If we want to put the accent in the middle, then we can get something like this. So here we're taking a pattern from the second half of the tempani bit, and in order to get to slur two of the same notes, we have to put a little ornament in. So that ornament, just a little flick of the fourth finger, and that separates the two notes and enables you to make them as two distinct notes rather than just a single note. And if you want more on jig bowing and on the tempani bit, I do have a video all about the tempani bit specifically and jig bowing in general. Okay, now let's move on to reels. So here we've got eight notes to the bar instead of six. And a, um, a single note uh, on a D string would sound like this. So there we're putting an accent on one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, da, 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 da. Look at the length of the bows. It's about an inch, no more. Let's try adding some fingering to that. So we'll have... And we're just giving a dig with that index finger pushing down on the first of each four notes. Now with a reel, you can place the accent there on the one and the three, and we're talking about beats here are the notes, or you can place it on the two and the four. So on the two and the four, it would sound like this. Let's add some fingering to that. You can get accents not just from the uh, the pressure of the first finger, but also by adding slur patterns. So if we do a, a single and then three slurs. Then that automatically gives you a, an accent on the one and the three and the one and the three. Because the bow has to move uh, a lot faster to do the one. To get to the same place each time, otherwise you'd be going you'd, you'd very quickly run out of bow. So that's a very easy way to get that accent. Let's try a different fingering. Now, a, a slur pattern which gives you an accent on the two and the four. If we start off with an up bow, we're slurring two notes. Accent on the third note. 
and then slur three. That's a really satisfying pattern to play. This is exactly the same as what Americans call the Georgia Shuffle, and it's a really useful one. It just gives a bit more subtlety and smoothness, I think, to, to bowing patterns. And if you want the accent in that place, then that's definitely the pattern to use. Um, a, a pattern you can occasionally use is a syncopated pattern, which goes... This is adding an accent in an unexpected place, which is the fourth of the eight notes. Now let's look at swing bowing and the only thing about this that is any different is that the notes instead of being played evenly are played long short long short. So the pattern we've just done uh, are played like that and it's more like a hornpipe but not quite as much as a hornpipe. And uh, some tunes, some reels naturally gravitate towards this kind of swung rhythm and some reels um, are usually played completely straight. And it's a bit of a mystery to me and I suspect to most people as to why and how some tunes uh, gravitate to one rather than to the other. And how they do that <laughs> without anyone ever discussing it. <laughs> um, one final comment is that um, traditional fiddle players very often uh, miss out completely on the concept of dynamics and um, in classical music this is really important and you see pages full of uh, sforzandos and uh, decrescendos and all that kind of stuff and uh, you, you almost never see that or indeed hear it in Irish music but I think it's pretty useful to be able to do um Be able to do both of those and the the difference is coming again mostly from the downward pressure from that first finger and what this allows you to do if you're playing in a small group context uh, is to to be able to musically step forwards or step backwards uh, I did watch a, a group recently where everyone all of the time played at the same volume even though they had very nice arrangements and were uh, one person was leading and then another person was leading and the, the other person would drop back. They were doing so without any um, idea whatsoever of <laughs> playing quieter or louder. Uh, so uh, whatever you practice, try practicing it quietly, try practicing it loudly and try practicing it somewhere in between. And you will gradually get the idea that you have that ability um, without a, a microphone to be able to get either quite a lot louder or quite a lot quieter. So I hope you found this useful. Um, I might do a similar thing for old time fiddling uh, or bluegrass fiddling uh, if I get enough positive comments about how useful or not useful this was. Um, and if you have any extra ideas about uh, useful things that a fiddler can learn about bowing, then do by all means let me know. If you'd like a copy of the sheet music for these exercises, then do subscribe to the channel and send me an email and I will send you a copy of that. And if you would like to help support the work I'm doing here, then do join me on Patreon, where there's lots of exclusive videos and you can get all of my PDFs for nothing. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.